My strategy for buying trains on eBay on this episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And today we have my latest uh, arrival from eBay. I prefer local shows whenever I can find them. And I do like local hobby shops when they have stuff that, that I can use. One of the things I like to do with eBay is to do a search under for parts and repair. So, you know, Lionel cars for parts or repair, Lionel engines for parts or repair. And sometimes you'll find these large lots of things and it's a little, you know, hit and miss, some good things, some bad things. So this is a typical example. So this particular box between my bid, shipping and tax Grand total, a little bit under $45 is what I paid for the contents of this box. So we're going to open it up, see what's in here, and, um, you know, see how I did. Now, obviously, you know, from the photo on the listing, I have a rough idea of what I'm going to find. You really don't know for certain until you open the box what you're going to find inside as far as condition and usability. The moment of truth. Use that for some other things. Oh, and a surprise right off the bat. This is a pleasant surprise. Okay, a uh, Lionel tri level auto rack. Now, I knew this was in the listing, but the listing showed no box. So I'm really happy with this. Now, what I saw in the listing, and yes, it is the wrong box 9123, that's the number for the CNO car, which I also have. And this one is in really, really good shape. Look how shiny it is. The, the little label on the box says mint condition. And yeah, I would say I really don't see any wear here on the wheels. It looks like this one really hasn't been run. And all of our pieces, these things are usually missing. This one has all six. This one is in really good shape. Now, like I said, uh, in the overall picture, this was uh, without a box. So finding it in a box is really a surprise. This is in super condition. Uh, I recently bought one in not as good a condition. It was missing some parts. And I paid, I believe, $15 at a show for that last year. So in this condition, with all of our parts and the box, this is, I would have paid at least $25 for this. Plus, uh, it fits into a genre that I'm collecting. I've been collecting these tri-level auto racks. I have an old video on the auto racks, uh, the MPC era auto racks right up here. For my $45 box, my first item, I'm already on my way. All right, second item. Here we have a Lionel MPC era gondola, 1977. Notice the mold mark, the 6462-2. Uh, so basically using a variation of the original uh, post-war tooling there. Not a particular fan of this paint scheme. So gondolas are always fun. You can do lots of things with them. And so if I were looking for one for a project, uh, you know, to turn into something else, you know, I might have paid a dollar for the shell knowing that I needed a new truck. Next item. Oh, I do not remember this one being in the photo. And we have another gone. Uh, Algoma Central. This one's a little later, 1992. A similar gondola needs trucks, but it's a good candidate for a repaint, another dollar. And again, this wasn't even in the picture at all, so uh, you know, kind of bonus. All right, what's our next item? Pretty nice all the way around. I think this is an Atlas Ocar. Not 100% sure. Uh, I know that Atlas put out a whole line of these brewery cars. Not really something up my alley as far as uh, my collecting interest, but this is a nice detailed car. If I can find some trucks for it, it would make a nice addition. Or maybe this is something I might be able to swap out with uh, some friends who are interested in the reefers. So would I have bought this? No, not really, even though this is a beautiful car. Uh, it just doesn't fit in with my collecting interests. That one's not really adding to the value of my box right now. Next item, there we go. What do we have here? Oh, 
again, this, I do not recall this in the photo. This is a scale hopper car. Again, we're missing trucks. I don't know who made this. Yes, I do, Lionel. Oh, so this is a more recent Lionel scale three bay hopper. That is nice. Uh, for the shell, of course, we're missing the doors and we're missing trucks. You know, I would have paid a buck, maybe two dollars for it because, again, I can add trucks and details and it looks like a blank slate. It's interesting that there's no graphics whatsoever on the car anywhere. That's interesting. Maybe a, a surplus shell that was purchased by a dealer or such. I'm not, I'm not really sure about that. That's a curious item. Right now, I'm not up to my $45 in my book but we've got more to come. Let's go to the next level. So this is a 3460. This is a post-war, uh, nice heavy trucks. We've got the metal rack. This is a trailer on flat car. Came with the original four, number 460 piggyback set. And it was also available for separate sale. So car itself looks to be in decent condition. We've got a little bent coupler here, but I think that, I think that's repairable. So even without a load, you know, this is layout ready. So, you know, this, I probably would have paid $5 for that right off the bat. Uh, the nice part about this is having this, uh, this metal rack, which is the original way of holding the uh, Lionel trailers on. So to replace the trailers, it's actually uh, probably between 15 and $30 a pair, depending on the quality and how original uh, we go with that, or I could probably um, print some trailers, uh, and I can also use trailers from my Lionel MPC era flat cars. So this fits in because I have had the desire to add to my trailer on flat car fleet, my piggyback fleet. So uh, let, let's call it eight, and we'll put it in the uh, the wind pile. And all I have to do is get some trailers, and I've got a nice trailer on flat car. Uh, this, these were made starting in 1957, I believe. Next, this is heavier than expected for a caboose. What do we have here? Aha. Oh, wow. This is filthy, but uh, a number 6457 caboose. Now, the this is one of the known as the SP type cabooses, Southern Pacific prototype. These cabooses originally came out in 1947. You can see the, the build date there in 1947. That does not mean this is a 1947 car, however. That's just when this uh, tooling design came out. This car, in fact, could not be from 1947 because it has the more modern couplers. These started in 1949. So this, these cars were made from 49 to 52. This was the top of the line uh, Lionel caboose at the time in O-gauge sets. Um, having two couplers, having the toolboxes, having, that's metal, having a metal smoke sack, uh, and the window inserts, although I do believe the originals had ladders. So somebody has played around with this one a little bit, and of course also we have this broken piece here, but these shells are swappable and I have a lot of caboose tops. So having the nice frame, well, I probably would have paid at least $10 for that, even in this dirty condition and even with the brake, because again, I could swap it out and it's got details that I could use with another shell to make a really nice caboose. Next, looks post-war. All righty. And here we have uh, an X2454 uh, with the early... Uh, electromagnetic couplers there. There we go with the solenoids built into the coupler and the pickup shoes, which appear to be in good shape. So the X2454, these were the big post-war boxcars starting in 1946. Uh, then they switched to the uh, more modern couplers in 49. I really like this size boxcar. These developed into the 6454s, uh, which ran up until 1952. I like this size car. It works well with 027. These cars look good behind Lionel's FAs or a Mark Z7 or the smaller post-war steamers. They have more details than the Scout box cars. We have operating doors. 
Um, so we have metal doors. So this is probably an early version. Again, this is a car that's in my collecting uh, ballpark, but it's a road name that I don't have yet. So yeah, I would have paid, uh, well, I just paid $5 for a similar car and a different road name. There's not a whole lot of collector interest in these. I think they're really nice detailed cars, uh, but they don't go for a lot. Uh, originally, there would have been these steps on all four corners, but they're almost always broken off. So three out of the four are broken off. So again, another $5 car. I'd call that a plus. What do we have here? So at first glance, we've got the same thing. It looks orange. It looks Pennsylvania. It's post-war. But we've got a twist. We have the same 2454 uh, shell, but someone has swapped out the mechanism for an operating boxcar. And there's the man. Okay. Ooh. So we have uh, the mechanism from a later operating boxcar. Let's see if it works. Box into place. Uh, look, we might have some spring repair to, to get. Yeah. So a little repair to the mechanism. Uh, so even if the mechanism wasn't there, wasn't work, like I said, you know, I would have easily paid $5 for this. It's not in original condition, obviously. Uh, if I can do the repair on the mechanism, which I'll take a look at, then this fills another project I was looking at. I was thinking the other day uh, about taking an extra one of these and finding one that didn't have a man, although this one does, and swapping him out for different characters for different times of the year, say, uh, for Christmas time, a Santa or a snowman, put a, an Easter bunny in there for Easter, put in a jack-o'-lantern or a scarecrow or something like that for Halloween, uh, and you know have a seasonal operating boxcar because these men pretty easily pop in and out. Another $5 car, I would say. So I'm happy with that. While the topic of my channel is usually toy trains, I'd like to talk about the real thing for a moment. The friendly folks at Sheldrake Press were kind enough to send me a copy of this book, Logomotive by commercial designer Ian Logan and writer and broadcaster Jonathan Glancy. The fascinating thing about this book is that it looks at American railroads from a different perspective. Instead of focusing on the locomotives, on the rolling stock, and on the companies themselves, the main focus of the book is on the visual design of American railroads. This book is a treat for the eyes and belongs in the collection of any railroad enthusiast or even a non-railroad enthusiast with an interest in visual design. Follow the link above or visit logomotive.sheldrakepress.com to order your copy directly from Sheldrake Press. And use the special discount code LG741222 to save 20% off the regular cover price in the month of December. And now, back to the trains. We have the ubiquitous, I love that word for these because they were everywhere, the NYC6462 gondola, previously mentioned while looking at those uh, uh, MPC era cars. This is the original. These are great cars. They run well, they're heavy enough, and of course, being a gondola car, lots of play value, you can throw all kinds of stuff in there. But because they're so common and everything, another $5 car. What else do we have? Oh my goodness, I, what is this? Wow, it is heavy. This is an observation car. We have what appears to be motor gearing here in the rear. Opening doors was part of an articulated set. So there would be a shared truck between this and another car. So uh, some sort of streamliner, probably part of a, like a Flying Yankee or one of the Zephyrs, something along those lines. Yeah, there's a shield there. There's probably a motor in there. It's heavy enough. If anybody knows what this is, you know, Feel free to send comments on this. I'm guessing, again, that this is probably maybe an MTH and, you know, like a Pioneer Zephyr or a Flying Yankee or something along those lines. All right, and there's more to come. We have a caboose. We have, uh, looks like a custom lettered caboose. Now, <laughs> memory is a funny thing. Because when I saw this in the photo, I just brushed it off and said, well, yeah, I remember seeing 
that CNO caboose in a Lionel catalog in the 70s. And then I checked the number and I checked my Lionel catalogs and my memory was wrong. Maybe it was a dream, but Lionel made no such caboose. And now that I have it here, I can see, you can see the decals. I don't know if it comes out on camera, but uh, you can see that this is a decal job. It's a very nice decal job. And we've got somewhat of a hybrid here. We've got an MPC frame, MPC trucks, but we have early post-war style ladders. And again, our early post-war style smokestack. So this is a hybrid caboose. Someone did a nice job on this, although I don't recall CNO having any gray with black lettering things other than maintenance of way. Certainly would be able to swap that shell out with another caboose and have a nice twin coupler detailed lighted caboose. And even though it's not original, I'd easily pay $10 for that. Let's see what else we have. All right, another post-war caboose. This one's a 6017. These were very common. And again, you see very little detail on these. This is prob probably a $3 caboose. The shell is in good shape um, and the trucks. So yeah, easily a $3 car. We've got a couple more in here. Well, this doesn't fit with anything else in my collection, but it does make for a nice conversation piece. But this is um, pre-war American Flyer O-Gauge. Yes, American Flyer made O-Gauge before World War II, along with their wide gauge uh, products. And then they switched to S after the war. don't think I would have paid anything for it, but uh, I could put it up on a shelf and say, here, look, American Flyer had pre-war O-Gauge. Uh, obviously, it's missing a lot of parts, a roof. I don't know if I guess this was a caboose or it might have been a passenger car. I'm not sure. I don't know my pre-war flyer very well. I'll have to look it up. All right. What do we have? We have one more. Oh, we have a Lionel operating log car. The 3461. This is a heavy die cast car in okay condition. We're missing two stakes but I should be able to uh, come up with some sort of parts replacement for that. A little rusty. Uh, not sure if it's in working condition. Probably not since the uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, the shoes are popped off there. Uh, the solenoid's probably good, though. We can test that. So in this condition, it needs some work. I don't know, maybe $2. But once I get it worked out, this is a nice car, nice heavy car. and can add it to our fleet of dump flat cars. Uh, that we have. So $2. So part of the fun of this is not knowing exactly what you're going to find, but I often find that I get, um, you know, bargain items when buying these bulk lots, especially when, you know, when they say for parts or repair, a lot of times those parts and repair, they're in better shape than they appear, but you can come up with a lot of good stuff, both for your layout and parts for your junk box for other projects by doing this. And now after a minimal amount of cleaning, lubing, and adjusting, here's my new eBay card. As always, I hope you liked the video as much as I enjoyed making it. And if so, please like it, share it, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors. And most of all, keep those trains running. And we'll catch you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks.